I bet you never use this funny yellow circle for things other than on-screen fidget toy. That's a shame, but not as big as dealing with this hell of a clutter while making drums. While it is so simple to fix it in a few clicks. Oh, and about the drum rack. Did you know that you can trigger any effect you want with... No automations needed? Probably not. No matter for how long you disappoint your parent. I mean, produce music in Ableton Live. So let's say you did a cool but messy drone pattern like this. Usually, if you want to apply effects or mix some sounds, you need to either do this here, which creates even more confusion, or switch back and forth between arrangement and session. A band-aid solution is to either resample or pre-end individual things, but Ain't nobody got time for that. Once you are inside drum rack, select the parts you want to extract from it. So for me, that's gonna be this hat and probably those two as well. And then surprise, surprise, click extract chains. Now I will also deal with the rest of it, leaving only the kick and snare here. So let's highlight those three here as well. And once again, click extract chains. A downside to it is that it moved things to the bottom of the arrangement. But once you move it back to your drum group, now you have each key element on a different track. But how about making it even cleaner so you have at least one thing organized in your life? First, let's quickly color code and rename those tracks with the cool little Max for Life device I have here. This one is gonna be my kick and snare. Hope I can write today. Kick. I had. And for this one, for the lack of a better word, let's choose tops. By the way, that's how I like to work and extract my sounds, but obviously it all depends on your taste. Here comes the coolest part. Let's say you don't like the placement of individual sounds or you want to change pattern while still knowing the context. All you get to do is to highlight all of those tracks you created and then press shift and tap. Voila. Now you have all of your sounds color coded. And while you're switching some things, you can still know the context of it. Now just to keep it clean like that, yet make this pattern a little bit juicy, let's talk about adding effects without drawing automations or playing with envelopes inside clip. Envelopes, that's the keyword here. I'm pretty sure I showed you this device in my sound design and live video, the link is right here I believe, but it turns out that once you drop envelope MIDI on an empty drum cell inside your drum rack, and then for example, map it to let's just say this knob inside drum sampler you can then trigger the effect by placing the note here and now i can play with envelope so let's just say i want to have this effect a little bit longer let's just increase the modulation part You know what, in the context, it actually fits better here, I believe. But it's not that you are restricted only to the effects inside drum rack or drum pattern. For the sake of trying things out, let's just drop one of my free arrangement racks on this drum group, because shameless plug, and then drop another envelope MIDI device to this empty drop cell. Once I map it to the, let's say, high wash parameter on my whole drum rack, notice that, that I'm not even working inside drum racks on these tracks, I'm working on a whole group. Quickly adjust the envelope, like for example, drag it all the way up, then we can try to switch to remote and then drag it to 100%. It makes a difference. Okay, if you made it here, you are ready for the biggest mind-blown moment ever. And just to make you feel better, I was also staring at it for 10 plus years of using life, having no idea how powerful it could be. So take a deep breath and meditate with me. This bold, moby looking guy shares some cool tips. I wonder it would be cool to give him a like and click the subscribe button. It costs me nothing, but makes him even happier. That's the plan for today. Usually you see this yellow circle and drop down menus while using third party plugins. But just as expected, there is a Max for Life device that levels things up. But more on that later, let's start from scratch. Once you extend the plugin window, you have a couple of options to automate and map. If you don't, like for example in this filter, all you get to do is to click configure and then move the parameters you want to automate. Let's say you want to automate cutoff and resonance at the same time. Then all you get to do is to go to this drop down menu and choose master cutoff for the x axis. 
That's the one that goes from left to right if you failed your math class. And for the second one, up and down axis, let's choose resonance. Now, let's watch magic happens. And it is really fun to play with, but it's even cooler once you record this automation. See what happened here? I technically lost my drum pattern. So remember that if you record something and have your track record arm, you want to click this plus icon, which stands for MIDI overdub. So now we have two automation lanes for the cutoff and for the resonance. And a quick reminder from my automations video, if you don't like to work with this many dots or you just simply confused with it, all you got to do is to highlight this automation, then right click and simplify envelope. Much better if you ask me. I know it's mind blowing and fun, but to be completely honest, a little bit limited, especially if you aim for more complex effects. That's where this free Max for Life device comes into play. Now, you not only have an option to modulate up to four parameters for both X and Y axis, but also choose between modulation type and then the range. And by the way, for this example, I used another insane freebie, Reiter Delay from Force FM. Don't know about you, but I think this XY modulation is insanely powerful and useful. And the coolest thing about this Max for Life device is that one, it's free, and two, you can use it for stock effects, you can use it for Max for Life effects, and third-party plugins if two modulation sources is not enough for you. Now I know some of my subscribers out here are live performers and musicians. And besides of this purely organization tip with drum rack, those tips I showed would be a game changer while performing live. But no matter how you use Ableton Live, if you seek for more tips like this one, then definitely check this video next. There was also like eight to 10 plus kilos of me. So those tips might actually be better than what you saw today. Judge it for yourself.